In this video, I'm gonna be making the most challenging sheath I have ever made. I spent quite a bit of time working on a sketch of the sheath for this knife. This knife offers a brand new challenge that I've never faced before. I've done lots of recurve sheaths, but this blade curves down and then the tip curves up a lot. If this was a normal sheath where the blade goes in from the end, this blade wouldn't even be able to go in. You'd get in about that far and then the tip would be hitting on the inside and then you wouldn't be able to go any further. So for this unique blade, I think what I'm gonna have to do is have a flap right here. So I'll be able to put the blade in just like this. Remember, this, this whole section will be open all the way up to here. And then I'm gonna leave a little extra room right here so the tip can clear. A little bit of extra room here. And then as you go in, you're gonna have to angle the blade correctly once the blade's all the way in there, you'll be able to close this flap and we're gonna have a Damascus frog right here and there'll be a hole in the leather and you can clip that, that leather flap right onto the frog right here. The first thing we need to do is make this Damascus frog because I'm gonna need it early, early on in the project. So might as well not even start cutting leather or anything until this frog is done. Since we're doing the pommel nut, it's definitely gonna be the most fun part about this whole sheath build because, oh, I remember, it's not leather and I don't like doing leather work. Metal work is fun. Wood, ivories, mammoth, pearls, carbon fiber, yes. Stone, I wanna get into that. Leather, uh-uh, no, no, not enjoyable. I can do it, but it is not enjoyable. So we're gonna need to make the frog. I may have called it a pommel nut. Josh put a little thing up on the screen that says frog, or you could say, no, just say frog. <laughs> Every time I accidentally say pommel phenomena, because I might say phenomena, or phenomena a lot over the next couple hours. This is kind of what we're going for. Get a close up of this, Josh. This is a store-bought phenomena. The way you attach it is, it has a little hole, and this piece right here is tapered, so you hammer it on, and it basically just press fits on there and pretty much won't come off. So right now, before I start working on this, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna fasten my frog to the sheath. This piece of Damascus that we're gonna use is a small end cut off of the mosaic Damascus from the uh, knife build itself. I decided to go ahead and make my own screw to hold the frog in place. It's gonna have a nice wide head on the screw, so we'll grab lots of surface area of the leather. So we've just got a piece of mild steel here, and I'm gonna turn down a shank on it, down to 3 16 inch, and we can thread it with 1032 threads. I need a cutter that goes the other direction. Ugh. I ordered the wrong cutter years ago, and it's still the wrong direction. This was supposed to cut that way, cut not this way. Yeah, but in order to do that, I gotta move this over to here.
we got a problem, got a problem. Cap's like stuck. Ah, come on, baby. Come on. Come out. Come out. I don't know what is going on. I've never had this happen. Like I'm loosening it right now. Oh, should be spinning right out. It's like about to break. Like I have to push on it hard enough. It's almost going to break. Come on, baby. Come out of there. Oh, there we go. What was, what's going on, baby? What's wrong, sweetie pie? Did you get a burr stuck in between one of your teeth? Something was stuck or something. Everything looks fine. That might leave a mark. I didn't have it tightened on there and it must have made it must have made it spin uh, <laughs> anti-clockwise. Oh ah <laughs> hot potato! Hot potato! It's a little warm. I'm not really seeing any dings. You tighten it up better this time. This little guy should be ready to go for the bluing. The Damascus this frog is made out of is pure nickel and 1084. I'm not gonna etch it at all. I'm trying something brand new for me. I've never done this before and I'm gonna just gun blue it and the pure nickel should stay perfectly bright and everything else will turn jet black, shiny. So it's gonna be really, really pretty if it all works out well. I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up, get the bluing salts fired up and We'll see if all that work I did for the mosaic Damascus with pure nickel is gonna pay off. Got the gun bluing salts out, got them fired up. I'm gonna go find a stick to stir it with, keep a close eye on them, get them heated up, and get that phenomenal nut slash frog gun blued. Got it in the salts, just need to wait a few minutes. Take it out and see how it looks. Hopefully it'll be nice and black with beautiful shiny nickel and there'll be no blotches. It's time to take it out and take a look. I'm gonna turn the heat off. It's been in there about 10 minutes and we'll see how it looks. I don't wanna to touch that. <laughs> it's covered in blowing salts. All right, I have pliers now. That's crazy looking. It's uh, it's darker, overall darker looking than I imagined. That's what was throwing me off at first. It's gonna be a little bit more of a subtle look, I think. The next day. So I just got done cutting the front and back pieces for the sheath out. The blade is gonna have a really fine, smooth, gun blued finish on it, and I don't wanna scratch it at all going in and out of the sheath. So we're gonna line the inside of the sheath with some, I believe is uh, goat skin or deer skin. I'm pretty sure it's goat skin. This goat skin is super soft. I have a little test piece of uh, mild steel that's gun blued, and I rubbed it on the goat skin I rubbed it on the front of this skin, on the back of this skin, and on a couple of different things and noted how many scratches I got from the different ones. The best thing I found by far was the goat skin. I rubbed it on there a lot and I wasn't getting any kind of scratches. With that being said though, we need to keep it really clean and make sure the environment out in the shop doesn't end up getting uh, grits of metal dust or grinding dust or 
sanding belts, nothing coarse. We don't want anything coarse embedded in this, otherwise could scratch the blade every time it goes in and out of the sheet. The outside of the sheet's gonna be covered front and back in shark skin. It's got a really nice texture that's not super aggressive and I just love the kind of satiny black look that it has to it. So I just got done grinding on these pieces. I had them clamped together with some office clamps and uh, ground them so they'd both be matching. And now I'm gonna take a corner tool and lightly shave off the excess material on the corners. The next thing I need to do is get the shark skin contact cemented to the surface of both pieces. In order to let the contact cement soak into the leather better, I'm gonna go over to the grinder and with a 120 grit belt, I'm gonna grind this smooth side a little bit and then the contact cement will stick much, much better. I think I changed my mind on the process. Instead of temporarily gluing the welt in, I think I'm gonna go ahead and permanently glue it in, at least permanently, unless something goes wrong. Permanently glue it to one side and then, uh, and then try to mess with my flap and fit up and everything. In order for the contact cement to stick really well to this piece, I took it over the grinder and used a 120 grit belt to just lightly grind away that smooth surface right where the welt is gonna be all the way around. And I say all the way around, I mean three quarters of the way around because the welt stops right here and then we're gonna have this big open section, again, just so that blade can go in and out of the sheath. Got the welt glued into one side. Now we're gonna get to see if this whole design is gonna work with this big open area in here. So you're gonna put the knife in like this, and then as it goes in, it'll straighten out more and more. All 
I think that's gonna work really well. In fact, I may have been able to leave a little less room here. I left some extra room just to make sure stuff was gonna clear. Day four. I think my original idea for a flap that's sewed to the back of the sheath and then it wraps around the open side and hooks onto the frog isn't gonna work very well. Uh, I couldn't get the leather to just sit nice and tight against the sheath the way I wanted it. So I think the way I'm gonna do it is have a strap that wraps around the front and goes all the way around and you just undo one side of it to take the knife out. So since I got that figured out, we can move on to other stuff. I am ready to mark out the area that's gonna get stitching. I'm gonna cut a little bit of a groove with this little uh, grooving tool all the way around the perimeter and then we need to stitch up this small section that's open on each half of the sheath where there's no welt. We need to do that before we put the entire sheath together. And then once the entire sheath's together, then we can stitch up the part that has welt all the way around. got all the stitching marked out, I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes in the area where the welt stops on both pieces and then get those stitched up. Then we can move on to actually gluing or contact cementing the pieces together. So I'm doing a type of saddle stitch right here. I have a needle on both ends of the thread. And then I start out by going through the first hole and centering the thread so it's the same length on both ends. And then I go through two holes with one needle and then back to the, the side it started on through the next hole. And then we take the other needle and do the same thing from this side. We're gonna go through this hole, and come through the next one on the other side, and then when you pull that tight, that leaves stitching in every position. Pull that nice and tight. That leaves a really nice looking, super strong stitch. Many of you know, sheath making is not one of my favorite things to do. I love knife making a lot, but not the sheath so much. But one of my favorite things in sheath making is running over the finished stitching with the stitch marker. And it makes the stitching go from all rough and icky looking to nice and clean and like perfect looking. It's just kind of magical, super satisfying. One of my favorite things in the entire sheath build. I'm ready to contact cement the welt and get the two halves glued together and then we can move on to drilling holes and getting this thing stitched up.
Now that the sheath is pretty much finished, I have one more part I need to make, and that's the strap that hooks onto the frog and goes all the way around the sheath. My original idea was to have kind of a big flap. I was gonna have this sewed to the back of the sheath and it was gonna wrap around that big opening in the side and hook to the frog, but that idea really didn't work out very well. I made some test pieces with, uh, with the same leather, just in a smaller piece and tried bending it around the sheath and stuff and it just really wasn't working out very well and the way it was kind of pulling the frog to the side and uh, all that. So I figured I would have a strap hooked to one side, go all the way around and hook back to the frog and then to take the knife out you'll just have to unhook one side of it. You'll never have to unhook the, uh, the other end. The strap's pretty much finished. I just need to clean up the edges and then put the final uh, polish on the sheath and strap once everything dries overnight. I wanna show you how that works. So you've got one hole in the end here and that pops onto the frog and that's gonna stay on there pretty much all the time. Uh, you'll pretty much never take that one off. And then it wraps around and this is the side you'll, you'll remove to take the knife at, in and out. So it pops on there like that, holds the knife nice and secure. Nice tight fit, pop it open, then you can take the knife out. Put it back in. Wrap it around. Just like that, I'm really happy with the way it looks and uh, I think it's gonna function really well as, as well. I will see you in the next video. May the forge be with you. Bye bye. Anytime I see a bubble in my coffee, I'm like, I gotta double check and make sure it's not actually like a fly floating in there.